In this video, I will show you how to create this JavaScript application, which is a Pomodoro timer. We have 25 minutes on the clock. And if you hit the start button, it will count down from 25. If you hit the stop button, it is going to stop the timer. And if you hit the reset, it is going to reset the time back to 25 minutes. It's really simple. I will walk you through every line of code. So let's get into it. In my project folder, I have three files. The first one is this HTML file with the boilerplate. I changed the title to Pomodoro Timer and link the style sheet and link the JavaScript file. Inside the CSS, I reset the margin and padding and set a font family. And the JavaScript file is empty for now. First, we are going to create the HTML and then style it. And finally, we are going to create the functionality. Also, don't forget to open this HTML on the browser using Open with Live Server. So we are going to start by creating a container. And then I will create a H1 with the class name title. We will put this text inside Pomodoro Timer. And right under it, I will create this HR. And we will have this paragraph with the class name and ID timer. And let's put 25 minutes inside. And for the buttons, I will create a button wrapper. Inside, we will have three buttons. The first one is going to be the start button. So let's give it the ID start. I will copy and paste this and change this to the stop button. Copy and paste this one as well. This one is going to be the reset button. And this is it with the HTML. Now we are going to style it. First, I will select the body to make it cover the entire page using minimum height 100VH. And I will copy and paste this background color. If you want to use the same, just pause the video and type down the same. I will make this body a flex container to be able to center the container. I will use align item center and justify content center. Next, let's select the container. I will make this one a flex container as well. I want the items inside to be stacked on top of each other. So I will change the flex direction to column and center everything again using align item center and justify content center. I will put some gap between the items and set the text color to white. And I will use this transparent white background color. Let's add some border radius and some padding. 4 em of padding at the top and the bottom and 3 em on the sides. I will select the title and increase the font size. Let's also style that HR as well. I will set the width to 100%. Background color is going to be white. Let's give it a height to make it more visible. Border radius and I will delete the border. Let's select the timer and increase the font size. We will make this one a lot bigger and increase the font weight as well. Let's select the buttons container and I will make this a flex container as well to put some space between them. Let's style the buttons, increase the font size and font weight. I will put some spacing between the letters and some padding. Let's have some little border radius on this one as well. I will delete the border. And text color is going to be white. Cursor is going to be pointer when you hover over it. And let's create a transition for the hover effect. And when you hover over it, we are just going to make it move to the top by 10 pixel. And let's also change the background colors of those buttons. The start button is going to have this green color. Stop button is going to have this red color. And reset is going to be this blue. Oops, there's a typo. And there you go. So we are done with this styling as well. Now we can create the functionality. 
So this JavaScript part can be a bit confusing if you're a beginner, but I will do my best to explain every line. And we are going to start by basically importing these elements that we are going to use inside the JavaScript. So we are going to use these three buttons and this timer. We are going to create some functions for these buttons and we will change the text inside this paragraph timer to display the time. So for the start button, I will create a variable named start. I will access the HTML document and get that element by its ID, which is start. I will copy and paste this and get the stop button as well. Let's copy and paste it one more time. Let's get the reset button. And finally, the timer. And these are all the elements that we are going to use. Now we can create the functions. So to create a timer, first we need to have some information about the total time. I will create a time left variable and I will set it to 1500 because we are going to be using 25 minutes for this timer. I will set it to 1500, which is the total number of seconds inside 25 minutes. So if you multiply 25 by 60, you are going to find 1,500. And also we need to create a variable called interval. And I'm not going to assign anything to this one because we are going to be basically constantly assigning the current time inside this variable. So this variable is basically going to get constantly updated as the time goes down. And now that we have the necessary variables, we can start to create the functions. First, we need to create a function that is going to update the timer. I will create a function named update timer. And we need to turn this number into minutes and seconds. And to do it, I will create a variable named minutes and basically divide this time left by 60 to find how many minutes inside 1500 seconds, which is going to be 25. But also I want to make sure that I get a whole number out of this, not a fractional number. So I need to floor this number just to make sure. And also we need to get the seconds as well. So I will divide time left by 60 again but I will use modulo this time. And this is basically going to give me the reminder of this calculation. And finally, we need to display this minutes and seconds inside this timer. So we will have this colon in the middle and we are going to be displaying two variables, minutes on the left and seconds on the right. So I will access the inner HTML of the timer and I will use backticks because we are going to be basically putting some variable inside this text using the dollar sign and curly braces. I will put the minutes and I will put a colon in between and put the seconds. So the problem with this is it's not over yet and it is going to get a bit complicated. Let's say there is nine minutes left. We need to display it as 0900. But at the moment, this code doesn't know it needs to put zeros. So if I leave it like this, and if it goes down under 10 minutes, it is just going to shove nine. And we basically need to put a zero at the beginning to make sure that it stays as two digit numbers. And to be able to do it, we are going to have this function named pad start. And it takes two arguments. The first argument is the length of this variable. So I want it to stay as two digits and I will put two inside. And if it goes down to one digit, I will make sure that it puts a zero. But also the problem with this pet start function is it doesn't work with integers. And inside this minutes, we have integers, which is 25 at the moment. And this two doesn't represent the number of digits. It represents the length of the string. Pet start function only works with strings. So we need to turn this number to a string and then we can use the pet start function. 
and this should work fine. Let me go through this one more time. I know this looked really confusing. So on the left of this column, which is this number of minutes, we have the minutes variable. We need to display it, but also we need to make sure that it stays as two digits because we don't want it to just display a single digit number because clocks doesn't work like that. If it goes down under 10, we don't want it to display just 8 or 9. We need it to display 0, 8 or 0, 9. And by using this pet start function, we make sure that it stays as two digits. And if it goes down to one digit, we add a zero to it. And to be able to make this function work, we need to turn this variable to string because pet start function only works with strings. And we basically do the same thing for the other side of this column, which displays the seconds. And all the same goes with the seconds as well. And now that we have the update timer function, we can create the functions for the buttons. I will create a function start timer. And this is going to be the function that is going to get executed when you click on this start button. So let's think of what happens when you hit this button. When you start the timer, the time needs to go down by one second. So I will take this variable that I created. And as I mentioned earlier, it is going to take the current time. So I will assign this to a function named set interval. So this function takes two arguments. The first argument that is going to take is a function. And the second one is the time. And this function basically executes this first function depending on the number in here. And this number represents the time and it takes the time as milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds means one second. So this function is going to execute this function every one second. And this is going to be really useful for us because we need a function to get executed every one second to decrease this number every one second. So every one second, I will decrease the time left by one and I will use the update timer function to display it. And also we need to do something when the timer hits zero. And if the time left is equal to zero, we are going to clear the information inside this interval and alert the user saying time's up. And after that, we need to reset the clock. So I will set the time left to 1500 again and display it using update timer. So just to recap what we did, when you hit the start button, this function is going to get executed and every one second it is going to execute this function and this function is basically decreases this number of seconds we have in here which we converted to minutes and seconds so each time it goes down it basically goes down from 25 minutes to 24 59 24 58 and so on so we have only two functions left and these are really easy ones. Stop timer function is just going to use clear interval to basically stop the time. When you hit this button, it is going to stop at whatever the number has inside this interval. And to reset the timer, we are going to use clear interval again to stop the time but this time after we're stopping the time we are going to reset it by setting the time left to 1500 again and i will display it using update timer and now we have the necessary functions for the buttons we can assign this functions to those buttons by using a event listener a event listener basically a function that listens for an event it takes two arguments the event and the function that is going to get executed when this event happens. So when you click on this start button, it is going to execute the start timer function, which is this one, and it will start the countdown. I will do the same for the others. The stop button 
when you click on it, it is going to use the stop timer function and the reset. When you click on it, it is going to execute the reset timer function. And that is it. Let's see if everything is working fine. I will click on the start button first. And it works fine. Let's see if the stop button works. And it works as well. Let's see if it's going to reset. And there you go. And also, I want to check if this alert goes up when the timer hits zero. But of course, I'm not going to wait for 25 minutes. So I will just set the time left to three seconds. And there you go. It works. So this is how we can create a Pomodoro timer using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for your time, and I will see you next time.